Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In the last episode, we discussed touch automation. In this episode, we'll explore two more automation modes in Reaper, trim read mode and read mode. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is a preview mix of Ill Fate by Hollow Ground. If you'd like to try mixing this song, the multitracks are available free of charge from Cambridge Music Technology. I'll leave a link in the description. As we discussed in the last episode, touch automation mode allows you to write automation as long as you've got your hand on the control, or mouse cursor as it were. The moment you let go of the controls, the parameter that you are writing returns to its original position. There are several different automation modes available in Reaper, and they can be set on a track-by-track -track basis, or you can set a global automation override. There may be instances where you'd like to have certain tracks on a certain automation mode and the rest of the project a different way. And while you can automate virtually any parameter of any track or effect, I'll be focusing primarily on using the volume automation for the sake of this tutorial. By default, Reaper does not have a global automation mode set. If I look in the transport, there is an option here for global automation override, and if I click on this parameter, we can see that the current mode is set to no global override, set automation modes per track. My fader on the track that we've imported is currently set at Unity. If I play this track now, it'll stay at the same relative volume unless I move the fader while it's playing. Let's take a look. Now at a few points throughout that demonstration, I stopped moving the fader and of course the volume stayed exactly where I left it. I'll take this back up to Unity and let's take a look at some automation. I'll need to create a volume envelope for the track. This can be done a couple of different ways. I can click on the envelope button on the track and that will open up options for the different parameters that I can automate. We'll go for volume. And as we can see, that's placed a lane with volume automation. I'll just arbitrarily draw some volume automation in this. I'm doing this freehand by holding the control key while drawing. Now at this point, if I play back the track, we should hear this volume changes, although we won't see any movement in the fader. Let's take a look. And as you could hear, the volume did change just as we've written. Let's clear that envelope for now. If I right click the envelope button on the track, I can see that the default for this track is trim read mode. And the dialog for that says that envelopes are active, but faders are all for trim. I'm going to create another volume envelope for that same track. I'll write in some automation and make it a little bit quicker this time. And if I play back the track, just as before with this in trim read mode, we should hear this automation but not see any fader movement. In trim read mode, Reaper will read this automation, but the purpose of the fader becomes a trim function for this reading. What that means is that if I take the volume fader down by about 6 decibels, my volume envelope will still be honored, but everything will be reduced by 6 decibels. If I play back this track again with the fader reduced, we'll still hear these changes, but it'll be quieter than before. And by that same token, if I return the fader to Unity, we'll still hear this automation, but each of these points will be increased back to their original level, about 6 decibels higher. Now this differs a bit from read mode. Let's right-click the envelope button again, and switch from trim read mode to read mode. In read mode, you'll notice that the fader has turned to green, and that just means that it's in read mode and that the fader will now move in accordance with the automation we've written. Let's take a look. And if we want to make any changes at this point, we would have to rewrite our automation. There, I've written some new automation, and let's watch the fader again. Read mode does exactly what it says. It causes your faders to read and physically move in accordance to the automation that you've written. So for example, if I'd like to add automation for panning, I can write this automation here. And if we play back the same track, this time watch not only our fader, but also our pan knob. So once again, read mode does exactly what it says. It means that any parameter that has automation written will read and physically follow that automation. As we demonstrated with the envelope button, again, you can change your automation modes on a per track basis, or if you'd like to change it for everything, there is a global automation override button in the transport. 
Automation isn't something that you should be afraid of. It does take a little bit to learn about them and understand the different modes and why you might want to use each one, but automating parameters is a great way to bring a static mix to life. If you'd like to learn more about the different automation modes in Reaper, drop a comment below. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking to buy me a coffee. I really gotta make sure I've got coffee in here before I film these videos. Or the Patreon link below. I like coffee. Also, check the link in the description to join us on Discord. See you next time.